And now we're going to move on to just kind of like an open discussion. I mean, I have specifically Jeff and Marnie here because I know that they've had um, their own, you know, personal experience with weight management, but, you know, it sounds like Jolene, you as well, and maybe others on the call. So, you know, really, maybe I'll just get started in um, like maybe Jeff, if you want to get started and you can tell us maybe just a little bit about yourself and your kind of weight loss journey and where um, where it's taken you. And I know it's been a bit of a roller coaster ride, so you can talk a little bit about that. How about you start, Marn? Jeff's on. Uh... Uh, hey, I'm a T5 paraplegic uh, from a fall when I was 16. Um, you know, very active um, before that, after that, with playing lots of sports, um, you know, by doing that, you get a lot of overuse injuries. And then I also had nerve pain that was really bad. So, you know, not, and of course the family doctor doesn't know anything about it. And so I, um, basically tried to stop, um, doing everything to see if that would help with the pain to make it better. And of course, when you start doing that, you get gain, uh, weight gain. And also, I'm sure some of the medications as well, you know, didn't, uh, did contribute to that. Mm -hmm. uh, for myself, um, you know, COVID happened and I gained even more weight, kind of like treated it like a little holiday at first and, you know, snacking. I wasn't doing the baking at least, but uh, um, yeah. And then, after, you know, like I got to a point where it's just kind of like, oh, crap, I can't continue gaining weight like this, you know? And um, so just slowly, like, you know, it's hard to, hard to measure with us because we can't get to the scale every day. But when I would, I would get on a scale at like the hospital or the gym and, um, you know, just take like one pound at a time. You know, it's just like, oh my God, that's so, so amazing. I didn't go up this time, right? So that's a huge thing for myself was just, um, trying to stop gaining weight, I guess. And then I, you know, was exercising. I exercise still like at least once a day, um, usually for an hour, whether that's um, like cardio dancing or weight, like HIIT training or resistance training. Um, that certainly helps, of course. And then once I saw the weight, um, you know, you notice it in your clothing, stuff like that. Like you don't necessarily have to weigh yourself like that all the time, but once I noticed, um, and I was like, once I noticed I was losing weight, it was because all I really did was stop eating junk food, like those extra sugars that they talk about, right? And I mean, so many of us, that's like one thing we have in our control is like our diet, like, you know, like we don't control a lot of things or it's like super difficult. So, um, you know, a lot of us like, what's the point of living almost if you can't eat a bag of chips every day, okay. <laughs> kind of attitude, right? Yeah. But, you know, you want to lose weight, but there's still, you know, times when you can have a bag of chips, not like the family size, but, you know, uh, a small one or something, right? Like it definitely, you can treat yourself all the time or not all the time, but you can treat yourself. And um, yeah, like I say, once I saw the weight coming off, I just, you know, I was like, yeah, that, that chocolate bar is delicious, but it, uh, I'm starting to look better and feel better. People are noticing then that really is also very helpful when people, you know, recognize that it's like, even just like if the first five pounds, if someone notices, it, it's like, oh, wow. Okay. Like I didn't notice it on myself, but you know, someone that doesn't see you all the time notices it. Right. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just having, just having success and um, really breeds more success. And what really helped me the most was just having a group of um, friends that we exercise together with. And it's just online. Everyone here is welcome. Everyone in the world is welcome. We have people from Utah and you know around the world. So um, I can get you anything you want to do with exercise. I got a list going on and I uh, love to have more people, of course. I think that's kind of it, yeah. Thanks, Maren. Uh, Jeff? You, you nailed it on the head, uh, quite a journey. Um, I just have a picture um, of me at my worst. Um, I was massive, I was 400 
and 60 pounds at that time. Um, that's the most I ever weighed in my life. Now I'm just under 300. Um, it's been hard. Um, I love candy. Um, I don't like salt, but I don't even like, I eat yogurt and that's my, my treat at my meal. And that's basically all the sugar I eat now. Um, the other thing I wrote down, I lost a hundred, like a good 150 pounds that I'm roughly categorizing now over a two year period where I lived before I was in assisted living boredom really hit during COVID. And I was drinking 20 cans of Diet Pepsi a day. Now I'm down to one can a day. Nice. Or, or a bottle, you know. Um, we changed the plate size. That's been a big thing for me. We went from a dinner plate. Now we're doing a lunch plate size. Um, my portions were like heaping. And now they're just like probably a quarter of what I used to eat. Um trying to look what else here i'm on a medication now um called contrave uh, that we had talked about it's about a 200 dollars drug a month however my doctor decided that if you do the wellbutrin which is um your propion and then naltrexone separately it's 200 20 dollars a month so a huge difference because we're taking the two medications and putting them into one with a huge cost saving. Mm -hmm. I did cognitive behavioral therapy. That's probably one of the biggest things that's helped me the most. Um, I decided during COVID that I was going to do nothing. My pain increased, not decreased. I find moving around in a day actually makes the pain less for me. And keeping active, like, like, the brain active, mentally active. When I when when COVID hit, I went to a pretty big depression. Um, couldn't see my family in long term care. Couldn't see my friends. Couldn't go anywhere. I was on total isolation. It was hell for me. And then since now that it's wide open, well, somewhat wide open, um, life is so much better and so much richer. But, uh, and then, uh, what else? I drink a ton of fluid a day. Uh, I used to drink a lot before, but now I even drink more. Um, what I drink a lot of is just water, tons of water, because that makes you feel fuller. And I thought any liquid made you fuller, but no, it's definitely water. And the other thing I really love is soda water. That's my treat. Um, like, and every once in a while, um, I really enjoy some soda water. So I drink about 3,500 milliliters a day, which is a lot, but I feel better. It helps sediment in my bladder. It's just, I feel my skin's better, much better. That was the biggest thing that we noticed is the redness and the, the little pressure sores were gone because of all the the excess fluid, um, acne went away. Um, I now have a dry skin instead of oily. So that really helped as well. But that's about it. That wraps it up. Mm. But uh, it's been a journey. Yeah. yeah. Does anyone else want to share a bit of their story? Yeah, go ahead, Jolene. Jolene and then Alan, yeah. Okay, so... I have, I have a mantra that I say all the time is that every pound matters. And it's, it's really easy to kind of get into, well, it doesn't matter if I eat this or eat that. And so it's the thing that I say all the time. Every pound matters. When I look at something, every pound matters. And it really does. I and mean, if you need some convincing of that, go pick up a pound of butter. Okay. And I found the intermittent fasting is a de direct benefit. So I, I, and I don't do it every day. It's not something so, but I do find a, a benefit for me if I don't eat past 4 p.m. So I have breakfast, 
and a snack and whatever I have and then and eat my dinner at three or four and then not eat the rest of the day and, and that really helps my make I don't gain weight or because this that's always that kind of sneaky thing you know where it's trying to come back I can keep it at bay with that the the last thing which is 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 something really important is that those evening cravings you know when you feel like Heather ice cream thing you know calling to her at the freezer at 9 p.m but i found that there's a definite link between those cravings and tiredness that i'm really at 8 p.m not wanting the chocolate cookie or, or whatever it is and the other thing is don't buy the things but is is to recognize those cravings later on on the day as being tired yeah it's tired i'm really not hungry i'm tired and so that that helped me a great deal. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Jolene. Helen, go ahead. There we go. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, I uh, I don't have a spinal cord injury. I've got MS, so I have ambulatory issues, and and with that comes fatigue. But I think uh, spinal cord injury people get fatigued too because they're working so hard. Uh, the, first of all, these uh, two days have been very helpful. I knew some of it. I'm a know-it-all, but I, I knew some of it, but I've learned quite a bit, and I think I can modify the takeaways. I, I, well, I know I can modify my breakfast, which is a standard breakfast. I can change that, change some other things. Uh, I'm naturally an introvert, but I enjoy seeing people. So I have grumpy old guys' lunches. Well, then we don't, we eat stuff that our partners don't want us to eat. So we keep that private. But uh, I like the idea of uh, another doable for me is to have a plan and then five days a week, but a day when you, if I see friends or I go to my men's club, which is not a golf course, so we're eating just standard, you know, fairly big dinner. Uh, and uh, I want to thank people for sharing their their uh, information. I have uh, very well managed depression, which I think is pretty common. And uh, that gabapentin, uh, Jolene, uh, I was on it just for about six months. It just wasn't working for me, so I went off of it. But when I was young, uh, when I was about maybe 20, in my late 20s, I, we were going to go to uh, England for a year and I'd been gaining weight, so I, but not a lot. And I, I lost it very fast. I lost weight very fast. <laughs> it's frustrating. Memory is kind. Well, I'm looking and saying, thanks a lot. You know, it's hard, it's gonna be harder now. And the other takeaway was, Five pounds makes a difference, 10 pounds make a difference. And Jolene, I'm, I'm gonna get a pound of butter every day and pick it up because that's what it really is. <laughs> yeah. like, you know, and I'm, uh, I think I'm 240 now. My lowest, I was 142 and the doctor said I was too, uh, too thin. Uh, that's a huge difference. And so anyway, thanks everybody. And uh, uh, a lot of it's doable, and but I think being with a group really helps too. Uh, seeing people reacting and stuff like that. So thank you. Thanks, Alan. Uh, Marnie. Yeah, that really uh, reminded me of a few things that helped me to lose weight was you know restricting where I ate. So for example, I wouldn't eat in my van. You know, because uh, you know you're gonna get a bag of chips in there. No one, even Jeff's like, "What? You ate chips in the van?" Like, I'm like, yeah, I did that a lot. Or like, I grab a donut or something, right? And and it's like, maybe don't eat like privately or something. Maybe if you live alone, that's kind of different. But I did restrict where I ate. I didn't eat in bed. Um, I didn't definitely didn't eat after seven p.m. Um, yeah, you know, just stuff like that that really makes it. I don't know. Maybe just a little bit easier to restrict some of those. <laughs> cravings and stuff as well and you know I, I go to bed hungry it's like that's okay I'm I'm not gonna wake up at the middle of the night and guess I'm, I'm too lazy to get out of bed <laughs> but yeah you know you, you'll be in the morning you probably won't be hungry anymore that's that was my experience um uh Kim you were asking you had a question I think so I'll let you ask yeah. and then we'll go to Jeff 
Thanks, Terry. Yeah, first I'd like to thank um, Marnie for helping me with my, I had an eating disorder about five years ago, um, but I don't have an eating disorder now. I, I struggled with actually gaining weight because I um, was in a secondary accident. I'm a C6 and complete quad. Then I was in another accident, which caused a lot of medical problems. Um, I was hit in my wheelchair by a vehicle. Um, and one of them was, I just couldn't figure out why I couldn't eat, but it's part of PTSD and probably depression and all of those related um, uh, symptoms related to that diagnosis. Um, so I tried, uh, so I had a lot of trouble gaining weight, but I finally did about five years ago. And I, you know, I found that just getting active and doing things and being involved in the community really, really helped. Um, it helped, I, I think a lot of it was mood related. Um, so then I ended up gaining weight and eating better, eating more often. Um, and then, then um, I would say about two years after that, I started to actually feel like I'm gaining weight. And I, would ju I, just, I'm, I was just over 50 years old. And I know I'm glad you brought up the um, menopause thing, Terry, because I can't really figure it out. I love the suggestions people have come up with. Um, I tend to drink a lot of water, especially before meals. You feel like you're full. But I mean, I've talked to Marnie about it and other people. I don't really eat a lot. We just, it's really weird after we get to a certain, seems like age or I don't know what happens, but I, I probably eat, I eat two meals a day and one treat to be honest. But um it's not a lot. I, I, I'm just wondering if anyone, besides all the other kind of tricks and uh, tips and tricks, if anyone's tried the intermittent fasting, any of those with success. There's one that's 16, eight that I've tried a bit. It's a pretty easy one for some of us because I mean, you can quit eating around five or something and then start again in 10, 11, whatever. Has, has anyone else tried intermittent fasting? I wouldn't call it intermittent fasting, Kim, but I've cut it back to two meals a day. Uh, mm -hmm. I've probably put in about 37 pounds over my accident weight. And, wow. uh, and being a quad, it's really difficult to burn the right amount of calorie. And uh, actually, <laughs> uh, uh, you. You, weren't, you weren't here with the first one, I don't think. But anyway, um, she was telling us to I'll work on a on a weight times uh, uh, grams per fat or something like that. Anyway, I worked it out and I actually eat less calories than than what they recommend for my particular weight. But still, even at that, I I was finding it really difficult to 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 reduce weight and and uh, but I think it's more because I'm institutionalized. They they sort of figure that everybody has to eat the same the, the, the same food, and so it's very difficult to get stuff customized. But I think that's what I'm going to have to really base what I'm doing is getting getting some type of a customized menu, whereby I can reduce the amount of calorie intake, not the amount of food. Jeff, you want to go ahead. And you know, and in my life, I eat three meals a day. The reason I eat, I eat a very small breakfast, but being diabetic, um, if I don't eat three meals a day with lots of protein, I'm in trouble. I'll either go really high or really low. And low does not feel good. Um, you're tired, you're lethargic, you don't want to do anything, you don't want to talk to anybody. The other thing, um, having a, a friend or, or somebody in the room to, to eat with. I eat painfully slow now. But before I was like this, you know, as quick as I could get out of there, the better. But now there's no timeline where I live now. So I can eat as long as it takes me. So eating slower has really changed my life. Um, digestion wise, and, you know, just having it, somebody to be accountable to really helps. Jeff, I really like what you said about eating slow. And it's interesting that you called it painfully slow because 
I actually find it the opposite. Um, for those who don't know, I've been taking a course in um, nature bathing, which include, I mean, it goes beyond being in nature. It's about being mindful and mindful includes mindful eating. And one of the things that I find is just really enjoying and savoring every little bite of food. Um, not only helps me eat less, but that's never really been my problem, to be quite honest, is overeating. Um, but it, the, the food just tastes better. You enjoy it. Um, it's just, it's more of a mindful experience. It's so I just wanted to add that in terms of if people have trouble eating too quickly, if you just look at the texture and really um, take your time to enjoy the flavors that can help too. Because we know it takes a while for your stomach to realize you're already full, but by the time you're full, I mean, your stomach, it's a little too late, the, time, the delay in time. Well, one of the diets I used to be on and it did really work was when you're eating your dinner, you just stopped halfway and just did something else for a few minutes because then you're registry, it's registering that you've already ate. So then when you go back to go eat the rest of your food, uh, you've already filling up, right? So that really worked. You know, and I think one of the hard things for us is... Um, you know, it's one of the things that we can get a lot of pleasure from. Yeah. And we don't get to get the same kind of pleasure or high from skydiving or other river rafting or, <laughs> I mean, we can, but I mean, we just, I don't know about the rest of you, but I used to get a lot of pleasure in other ways that I can't quite uh, right. fulfill anymore, whether it was skiing downhill or whatever, and perhaps even you know, those activities help burn calories. Yeah. They gave me pleasure. Plus I was busy doing them. So I'm not, I don't have as many hours to eat. Right. Um, one of the other things I do too, is I, I um, chew gum a, a bit. I don't know if it's a healthy thing to do, but if I really need a snack or have a craving, sometimes I'll grab a few pieces. There's gum all over my house. I think Barney yeah. does that too. Um, but, or I hate to say it, or a sucker or something just to beat a craving if I have one. Um, like, I'm, I, hey, I'm just giving you some tips that I've used. I don't, yeah. But th that's a good idea, too, Debbie. I think for, I don't know about everyone else, but yeah, I think it's just, um, we're probably not as active as we were many of us before. And so like yeah. you said, the menopause is really bad because I, I was yeah. doing really good there. And then all of a sudden, I'm noticing little weight gain. I thought, well, what could it be? I'm eating less, uh, menopausing. I know that doesn't help, but I am a smoker. But I have been, I'm just really tired of smoking. So I've not been smoking that much. And I thought, oh, that's probably what the other part is because you instantly gain more weight. And I thought, I don't want to start back more. <laughs> I hear but that's you. Not another problem of mine now is, I've really cut back quite a bit. So I thought that's got to be why all of a sudden this stuff is sneaking on. <laughs> well, and I hear you, Debbie, and I know I like what I'm glad Terry asked that question because in my 40s, as I was saying before, I had a problem and the doctor and the psychologist kept saying, why can't you just eat? It, I don't know if I knew. I mean, I, I really had a problem. I was threatened with going to the eating disorders clinic yeah. and I chose the um, nutritionist instead, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I, it was something going on in my brain. I don't know right. the answer still today, but then all of a sudden, boom, I hit menopause and all of a sudden I feel like I have the opposite problem. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. It's, it's tough. Yeah, it is. Go ahead, Jolene. So I know this is about diet and exercise, but I'm going to add a little something the other way. Now, this, if you go and look at the medical studies, you'll find this, and this applies to women, okay, that longevity, who lives the longest in women, it's not the women who weigh the weight that they should, it's the ones who slightly overweight, who, who actually have that extra 20 pounds, and, and they don't know why, but that's been a consistent finding, is that um, older women who are seniors will outlive on average 
a woman who's the right weight, the, who, who fits the stats. So, so you can sort of just, if you don't make it right to where they say you should be, yeah. you've got that little extra, but you can sort of say, okay, I'm doing cardiovascular protection because that's what it seems to do. Yeah. yeah. And as long as you're happy and comfortable and healthier. <laughs> Go ahead, Jeff. The other thing I wanted to make a comment about is aging. Um, I've been in a chair 21 years. When I was first in a chair, I couldn't gain weight because I was active, like really active. And since then, I went, and the biggest mistake I made, I went all out right away and didn't, you know, take it easy. Um, in my life, I was very, very, very angry, uh, messy divorce. Um, you know, just stuff like that. Um, very hurt. Um, so I went to sport to do all that, to, to release my anger, but longevity wise, I'm done. Like I was downhill skiing in a sit ski, went down a run I shouldn't have that I didn't know anything about and blue, you know, had two rotator cuffs done at the same time, six months in a care home not even able to get out of bed. Um, so that was my biggest mistake. And now I've learned that slow down, you know, you're not um, 31 when it, when it happened, you know, I'm 52. So, you know, it's time to act your age. And I find now that transfers are like night and day easy. I can pop up like, a pop can now, uh, like the Jackman box kind of thing. Before I was on the ground more than I was making my transfer. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, and my experience in aging. And so I, 26 years as of tomorrow, tomorrow's my, uh, my, I call it indie, my I'm not dead yet. Um, <laughs> but, uh, so I was injured young and I was underweight already as, as a 20 year old and um, lost, obviously, I think I, I'm 5'11 and I went down to like 90 pounds when I had my injury, right? Gained a little bit of weight, but I never really made it over 110 pounds. Um, and I had a really, uh, thanks Jeff, and I had a really um, hard time gaining weight um, and then when I got sick, oh, that was like a nightmare. Like I, I was getting sick a lot more when I got pneumonia, you, I'd lose like a whole bunch of weight again. My doctors were telling me you got to eat like whipping cream and fruit loops for breakfast because you got to like, just put on like what you can. Um, it was horrible. Right. But now with like the whole aging thing and I have gained weight, so I'm at uh, a, a, like a more reasonable weight for my height now, but like transferring for me is so much more difficult, right? Activity for me is so much difficult and just being a little bit older, I'm noticing I'm not as careful as I used to be, or no, I'm still careful, but I'm like slipping more often when I'm transferring or, and I don't know if that's like attributed to weight, but I do feel a bit healthier. So I feel like it's kind of raised my blood pressure. Cause I think I was saying yesterday that I have really low blood pressure. So I have noticed, I think I'm la a little bit less dizzy throughout the day. Um, I, uh, I'm not as like, yeah, I don't feel like I'm starving. I feel I haven't been sick in so long other than getting cold. You have, to, you have to be careful because as we're aging, yeah. our muscles are getting weaker now. Exactly. Because when you go to transfer, it's like, what? how in the hell did I miss that? I, it, I've been doing it for 50 years now. Exactly. So what's going on? And it's because you're like, you can't open a jar now. You have to have little machines that help you. Ugh. Yeah, that's exactly right. And then you're like, oh, that's a rotator cuff injury, right? Right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Have yeah. had those a few times. Yeah, yeah, right. Anyways, so so much to think about that we have to go through, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it was great last two days. It was pretty good. I'm glad that you guys enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, if 
uh, I'm gonna give you, oh yeah, Jeff was in the hospital six times, six to eight times a year and now zero, right, exactly. I think it's just about maintaining that healthy weight, right? Like yes, whatever yeah. that is for each person. So, yeah. Um, yeah, the e easiest and best place to find out information about our online events is just to go onto our website if you click on the event that you're interested in and then more, it you will have a direct link um, to the Zoom event. Um, and if it's a registration, then that's when you get your email, like for the forum, they email you the link and it's a personal link. Most of our sessions are just like, you know, on, online and open, not registration needed. Um, the Epic SCI, info is here so they're running that they're running that in vancouver as well as the okanagan but they do have travel subsidies available for um, a lot of people who are interested in it so if traveling um parking gas uh, uh, like all of those things even if you wanted to come from the island and participate uh that's something that they will look at individually um, and then the active hands and gym pack. These are examples of what uh, they have. And then chair stuff is um, at the very bottom there and you can order them through him. And that I think is it. I got one quick question. Yeah. How do we like become part of that program? Are we in it now? No, so if you wanna be in it, here, just email me and say you wanna be in the weight management program. Oh, yeah. um, and like I said, it'll be starting up, you know, so I'll probably connect with everybody in the new year, connect you to your coach, like just give you the checklist, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you just email me, I'll add you to the list, and then I'll contact you in the new year to get you started. Yeah, the, so cooking, cooking yeah. classes would be great. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I mean, like I said, you don't have to be, I mean, if you're just interested in cooking classes, Marnie, um, all, of our, all of our events are open to everybody still, right? So you don't have to like sign up as part of the program, but the extra part is that you'll get these nutrition, exercise, and coaching um, sessions. Go ahead, Julie. I would really like to see someone, or maybe as a group, mm -hmm. we write an SCI peasant cookbook. Mm. The, the problem we all, uh, for many of us, is we have limited income. Yeah, so exactly. when we look at, when we look at those recipes, you know, um, baked fish, you know, salmon, and this sort of thing, and I, you know, I mean, that's one of the things we learned with Heather, you know, motivation, accessibility, you know, I mean, how can we access the foods that we should eat if we have a limited income? And on top of that, we have limited um, ability to cook these foods. I mean, it takes a, a lot of work on our muscle part to cook these and then we're tired. So I would like a peasant cookbook of how we can have recipes with the foods that we eat the eat in a way that we can cook them that's easy that so that it'll I'll make something that'll last me for three days yeah. you know using these right now I live on cabbage soup chicken soup beef barley soup chicken soup cabbage soup <laughs> but I <laughs> would really love to he get some recipes from other people who have found ways to do this thanks that's a great idea. And, you know, I mean, this is a great place to start. If anybody has any, you know, great recipes, you know, feel free to send them my way. Maybe like, I'll just be the conduit for all that information. Right. Yeah. We'll just get that started. But I think it's a great idea. And I completely agree with you that the hardest part about changing your nutrition is we all know what we're supposed to eat. Unfortunately, all the cheap stuff is in the middle aisles. <laughs> and it's getting crazy <laughs> expensive now, right? Just it's unreal. With everything. Yeah, exactly. 
Anybody else having any other questions or? Awesome. Well, I have one yeah. quick one. Yeah, Sorry. Ahead, um, I'm anaphylactic to fish. Mm. And it's been a like and seafood and a lot of other like pork, um, eggs, like everything almost. And my question is, I was wondering about taking fish oil. Mm. Would that cause the antiphylaxis uh, <laughs> to hit me, whereas I need to do my EpiPen? I don't know the answer that, to that myself, but I can ask that. Or Google uh, it. <laughs> that's a good question. I'll send Thanks. Joanne and Ian a message about that um, to get their opinions. I, I'm sure Joanne probably probably will know that, Jeff. Yeah. I, I totally forgot about it. No, no, that's totally fine. But it's a it's a really good question. You know, my initial reaction is probably yes, because fish oil is fish oil, but. Uh, but who knows? Maybe there's some synthetic ones or I don't know. They're awesome. Anybody I just interested? quickly Googled it, you guys. Yeah. If you have an allergy to fish or shellfish, you may want to avoid eating fish oil as well. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Mark. All right, everybody, have a great rest of your weekend. Um, thank thank you. you for spending these times, this time with us, and we'll see you soon.